my dudes, it is that wonderful time for Monday Mail number 31. We've been on a few month hiatus, but it's coming back. It's coming back strong. Um, before we get into this too much, so I've, I'm sure you've noticed, I have a new YouTube dude on my channel, um, who so far I'm pretty happy with. I mean, we've got pretty meme content, we've got our discussions, we've got, um, yeah, good shit. I'm probably within, if it's not posted by the time I do this Monday Mail, it'll be posted by the time I do the next one. I'm probably going to start a Patreon for my YouTube channel. So what does this mean for you, the viewer? It means you have more ways to give me money, and for me it means I have more ways to earn money. Um, I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but basically what's going on is I have some number of people that watch my YouTube channel that come to my stream to support me because of the content they find on my YouTube channel. Um, while any and all monetary support is obviously greatly appreciated, unless you're only donating one fucking dollar, um, the problems that I'm having, I'm j oh, that was a joke, by the way, I don't know how many people are familiar with the Molyneux reference or not, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, the, um, the uh, the confusing part for me is that it's hard for me to tell how much income I earn from YouTube versus how much income I earn from my stream. So part part of the goal of making the Patreon instead of just you know making more money, is, which is always a good thing, is is to kind of differentiate my income streams a little bit more. So let me give you an example. Let's say that I have one thousand subscribers on my website. Okay. Let's say that um you know fifty of them come from YouTube. That's good to know. You know if I make the Patreon and I lose fifty subs on my site and fifty move over to Patreon, you know it just helps me understand you know how how my income has changed, or, or rather how my income is influenced by having the YouTube channel rather than just the ads that run on YouTube. You know. Much the same way, um, let's say that I do this and I've got a thousand subs on my website and I lose seven hundred subs on my website and seven hundred of them move over to the Patreon. It's like okay, well, we you know we have to take YouTube a lot more seriously. Like I've kind of neglected this platform to some extent, and now maybe I should even consider taking time away from my stream, you know, to to influence it, um, to influence it to um. To, fuck, there's a word I'm looking for, but I don't remember. In my old age, these words escape me. Um, Oh, to invest in it as, as a platform more. So whether that would mean, you know, taking time away from stream to make dedicated video content or whatever, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, so keep in mind that that's, that's going to, yeah, that's going to be happening sometime soon. And then um, in terms of Patreon rewards, what I basically want to do, my goal is just to kind of have my website linked to the Patreon. If you're a tier four on Patreon, all the tiers will be the same as my site and my Patreon. And then there'll be reciprocity between those. What I'll probably start doing is I'll probably start restricting the Monday mail questions. I'm doing that that grave error where you take something that was free and then you put it behind a paywall. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna restrict the Monday mail questions to people that are subscribed on Patreon just as a way to give people that are interested in my content enough to ask a question you know, or are interested enough of my content to, to donate to actually ask a question, right? Just to kind of put a little wall there. Um, hopefully it'll cut down a little bit on the shit posting that goes on in the questions. And then it gives you um, a little bit of a value add a little bit for subscribing there in terms of like other benefits and whatnot. Um, I'm going to be completely and totally 100% honest because I love you all very much and I value your support. And I also value my relationship with you. Um, the, the, um, the, the benefits probably won't be all that great. I really focus on um, I focus on doing my stream thing and I focus on doing the YouTube stuff and that's pretty much where all of my effort goes. Um, I don't offer much in the way of rewards for any of my subscribers other than the benefit of knowing that you get to support me and my extravagant lifestyle. Um, but I'll, I'll try to work some things in. Like I've got like a Minecraft server right now that nobody really plays on. You know, I might expand that. If, if you can think of like, basically if you can think of, um, if you can think of ways to if you have any ideas, let me know. Let me put it that way. Things, things, ways that I can give back without contributing a fuck ton of time to do it. Um, because the problem with a lot of the things is that, like the time, the time constraint. Like I have no time for anything ever, right? Between you know, I've got Nathan three to five days of the week, and then um, you know, I'm trying to stream and, and be good at video games, and then also play a variety of video games, and and then do the politics thing, and then do enough reading to be up to date on the politics thing, and then answering emails and keeping up with social media. Um, yeah, there's a lot of shit that I, you know, um. That I'm that I'm kind of juggling it all at the same time. So if you, if you can think of anything that I can dump, and it, you know whether it costs money or whatever, it's not a big deal either. You know, I'll pay a couple hundred bucks per server to do some shit on. If there's like a big game that you guys are requesting, like a Terraria server or some shit, I don't know, just leave it in the comments or whatever. Anyway, getting onto the uh, to the actual questions, which are now two months old. These are old as fuck questions, man. Imagine how much better these questions could be if um if I actually did this more frequently. <laughs> but don't worry, dude, we're doing it. Okay, um, the first question was deleted, I'm guessing because a guy deleted his Reddit account, so maybe it was. It must have been a really embarrassing question. So I'm moving on to the next one. What's your rationale on pirating music slash games slash TV shows? How do you justify it? 
So in terms of pirating, pirating is one of those things where um, initially I did it because I didn't have the financial resources to afford the things that I liked. So like if you go back, you know, seven, eight years ago, I didn't have thousands of dollars to buy music with. Um, in terms of, but but nowadays, now that I actually have money, it's really sad, but the um, it, it really just comes down to a matter of access and organization. Like I have the money now to buy, you know, whatever I want. Um, if I wanted to, but the problem is it's really fucking hard to do that. Like I, like, fuck, like I had to pirate Halo for my child to play, for Nathan to play on PC, right? Because I, like, there was no way for me to just pay, I'll give you 20, 40 bucks or whatever, right? 20 bucks probably nowadays, right? To download Halo, like digitally, but I couldn't do it. I had to buy like a DVD on Amazon and shit. Like I'm not gonna, fuck. man, fuck that shit, dude. There, this has always been the, the classic problem with pirating, okay? The problem is that the, the pirating websites offer their stuff in such a way that it is just, it's a, it's an overall better experience than buying things legally. Like this is a problem. This is a very huge problem. Steam has stepped and to a large extent to solve that but that ha this problem hasn't been really solved with movies and music and the, and the person that does it is going to make a fuck ton of money doing it hopefully um netflix is kind of getting there right where netflix is offering a really good service i think there's three times as many netflix uh subscriptions as cable subscriptions now i think i read that um in a thread i don't know if that's actually true or not fuck i should look this shit up i don't know if that's actually true as a that might not be true Okay, never mind. I don't. I'm not sure if that's true now. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have quoted that as our beacon of political honesty and reasonable discourse. I probably shouldn't have quoted that. But regardless, there's a fuck ton of people that subscribe to Netflix, right? We know that that's true, and you know, hopefully, it continues to grow. Um, but in terms of like, if I want to watch all of like, here, let me give you an example of a problem. Okay, I pirated Game of Thrones. Okay, let me give you an example of this. I wanted to watch Game of Thrones legally. I really like it, and I like HBO. I think HBO has done a lot of really cool shit. HBO is HBO is that good shit. Um, fuck, did I don't know? Did the Wire was the Wire originally on HBO? Yeah, it was. HBO has done some really good shit, and because they can you know make like rated R stuff, they can go, they can explore really fucking deep themes. They can make it edgy as fuck. Um, and and they have you know a lot more freedom on that platform than other platforms. But the um, but the um, uh, the, but, okay, I'm sorry, fuck. The um the the way that you do this legally was like so convoluted. So this is what I want to do. Okay, I want to watch Game of Thrones legally on one alternative. Okay, I have a torrent site. I can go to that torrent site. I can type in Game of Thrones. I can see all six or five seasons or whatever. Click download and have them all. That's the illegal way to do it. The legal way to do it. Now some of you are gonna get mad because I might be wrong in this, but the legal way was like I have to go to the HBO site. Okay, I have to um. After I create an account there and everything, I have to download an app on my phone, I think, and then I have to tell the computer that I have the app on my phone, and then if I do that, I can stream it somehow on the website if I okay it mobily? I, I don't even know. Like, And this is, a, this is a problem, okay? This is a really big problem, okay? Because I consider myself to be far more tech savvy than the average person, right? Um, and to be fair, the average person isn't gonna be able to navigate torrent sites either, but like, if I'm having trouble figuring this out, and I'm sure I could figure it out, right, if I were to spend a little more reading, but like, this is like a, this is like an effort thing. Like, why the fuck am I gonna sit here and, and navigate the, 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 um, the, 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 the maze of, of figuring out how to fucking watch Game of Thrones legally when I can just download all five seasons instantly on 1080p quality, like, for free, what, like, this is a problem, right? And this is a problem that a lot of sites have. Same thing with music, too. Like, if I pay for music, I don't want fucking MP3s. If I pay for music, I want the fucking, I want the WAVs or at least ALAC or FLAC, right? I need a lossless form. Like, there's no way I'm going to pay you for transcoded shit. Why the fuck would I go on iTunes or some shit? And I know that sometimes they offer lossless formats, but then you've also got selection. Like, I can go on a private torrent site. I can look up, like, any fucking band in existence and find their shit in, in any quality that I want. And to get that same, like, if anybody here has used a private music torrent site, if you're, if you're on Redacted or Apollo, um, or if you were on Oink or Waffles or whatever, right, in the past, um, or what, right? It's really, the, the, the experience there is, it's just not even close to, to legally. And these are sites, like, if these torrent sites charged, like, you know, $20 a month, I would pay it. Like, and I think that's, it's not even, how much does a Netflix subscription cost? I don't know anything about Netflix. <laughs> I, maybe I should. Uh, oh fuck! Netflix is only fucking seventy ninety nine, seven ninety nine a month. Like I would pay fifteen, ten, twenty dollars a month easily for some of these music torrent sites. You could find fucking anything in any quality. Like that. That's my big problem. I'm sorry. Fuck this one question is gone off for too long. But like that's that's my big problem. Typically with, with doing things legally is that it's just really hard and inconvenient. The the selection is almost always worse than what you'll find on a private site. Um, 
the selection of the selection. So like if I'm on a private site and I find Game of Thrones, right? I have like 15 different qualities that I can get it in, right? The selection of the selection is better. Um, the, um, the cost is better, although I don't ever expect these sites to be free. I wouldn't expect that. That's unreasonable, right? But I mean, it is a better thing. Um, 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 um I keep saying, um, the, and the, uh, the, the ease of access is typically better. On a torrent site, you click the buttons, you download things, and in like two d- button clicks, you have it downloaded onto your computer and you own it completely, right? Whereas, you know, the only thing that's come close to this, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, was Steam. Steam did it for video games. Um, as much as I don't like Steam as a program, like, it's very easy to buy video games. And as a result, you know, I haven't, Halo, that Halo game I pirated for my son is like the last game I've pirated in a long, long, long time. Because I don't need to pirate games. Because if I want pretty much any game, I could just look it up on Steam and buy it. That's a good thing. That's really good. And Steam has had massive success success as a result of that so yeah that's some good shit next question oh that question was from volts sc2 the next question comes from sad doji or doggy or doggy hey you mentioned a long time ago that you lived out of your car when you're poor well i'm sort of in a similar situation got any tips or suggestions i'm sorry maybe i phrased this poorly in the past um i've never lived out of my car because i'm poor that's absolutely not true um i don't think i've ever said that but i can understand maybe i could interpret that way i lived out of my car for a few weeks when um i broke up with my ex girlfriend wife i guess we were married technically so when i broke up with my wife um i i lived out of my car for a few weeks because i didn't really have a place to live i was you know it ramped up my um my searching for a place to live <laughs> but um at, at the time i just didn't have a place to live so i mean I, I lived out of my car but that was really it like it's not like i um it's not like i was like broke as fuck you know like i could go to the uh there's a gas station trucker stop that had a shower in it near work um i think i crashed with kyle a couple times or i don't know i might have only showered there um and then, yeah, like, I still had plenty of food to eat and everything. I mean, like, I wasn't, like, dying, like, homeless, like, begging for money on the streets. Oh, and I still had a job. Like, I was working my job the whole time, too. So it's not like I had all this free time either. And I worked, like, 60 hours a week. So I spent most of my time at the fucking casino, most of my waking hours anyway. So it's typically just work at the casino, go out to my car, drive over to the gas station, sleep in my car, wake up, um, shower over there. Or sometimes I think I showered at Kyle's place a couple of times and then, you know, go back to work. So it wasn't really a big deal. It, it sounds like a big deal, but it wasn't. Like, I, it's, I mean, like, being actually homeless is way fucking worse. Um, if you're actually homeless and, and you have and you, you're in a similar situation, I don't know. It depends on why you're there. Are you there because of a fuck ton of debt? Are you there because you got kicked out of your parents' house? Like, I don't know. Find a place to live. The thing that seems to me to suck about being homeless, and this is just off the dome, off the top of the dome, because I haven't thought about this much, is you don't want to let everything else in your life fall to shit while you don't have a house. Like, the, the longer that you're homeless, the higher the chance that you'll be jobless or that you won't be able to find a good job. You won't be able to continue your education. You, you'll, you know, you'll start to um, fail in basic upkeep for things like hygiene or diet or whatever. Like, you, you want to probably get out of that situation in whatever way is possible. So if you've got a friend you can stay with, if you've got family you can stay with, like these are all pretty important ways to try to mitigate that circumstance. But I don't have good, like, here's how you survive if you're homeless. Like, I can't really give you good tips there because I've never really been in that position and I haven't really read a lot in doing it. Um, yeah. I also have a big benefit in that I can I can usually sleep anywhere. Maybe because maybe I'm kind of short, I'm like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, so I can sleep anywhere and be comfortable. I don't have a problem sleeping in a car, whatever. It doesn't bother me. My neck doesn't get sore. My back doesn't get fucked or whatever. So uh, that was a big benefit as well. Um, but good luck, buddy. Oh, oh, I wonder if that's why his name is Sad Dogi. No, never mind. He's had this account for a while. Okay. Um. Okay, we'll do two more questions because the next one is really shit. All right. <laughs> the um. The next question is: Can you please make a guide on how you have your Fubar 2000 set up? It's literally the default thing. It's like right out of the box. Come on, guys. Are you serious? You like click the tab and it's like, oh, I want this, and then that's how it's set up. What the, what kind of a question is this? Bad ombre, twenty, one seven one. Are you serious, my dude? Unless you meant like how to install it, in which case I'm not your fucking tech support. Okay, and then the final question is i just learned that stefan molyneux is somewhat of a cult leader and has encouraged people to excommunicate people including family who believe in the state what are your thoughts um i don't know i think the stefan molyneux dude is fucking crazy i mean i've said as much on stream multiple times um i i think i think he's an insane dude i i wouldn't I, I, anytime you get people that are encouraging people to like leave their family and shit i would be really worried i don't think my thoughts on this are going to be anything unexpected or super controversial like it's just not a good meme right you, you don't want to be encouraging people that, you know, in order to buy into your ideology or whatever, they have to abandon their family and shit. This is typically, um, 
this is usually like emotionally manipulative, manipulative, abusive behavior, right? It's where you try to isolate the person that you're talking to or isolate the person that you're interacting with as much as possible because if they have to rely on you for thoughts, ideas, support, um, love, care, whatever, shelter, um, the more they have to rely on you, the easier it is to make them do whatever you want or convince them of whatever you want being true, right? Because they have no other support around them except for you. This is pretty classic uh, manipulator, abusive behavior, you know, kind of shit. Anyway. That's all I have for now. I will be back next week with the money mail. If I have that Patreon, it also encourages me to make these all the time because if I don't, people are going to make a ton of fucking posts saying that I'm ripping you guys off. Um, it'll mostly be a rip off anyway, but, you know, they would actually have more validity. So <laughs> I love you guys. I will catch you next time on the flip side. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.